Well, hello and welcome to another program of the AQS Guild Buzz with Bonnie. I've been having a blast talking to representatives from guilds all over the country in this program. And today we have with us Laura Nagel, who is the president of the Minnesota Quilters, and Karen Kapitsky, who is in charge of their virtual quilt show for this year. So let's start out and talk, Laura, a little bit about the history of the group and how you got started. Okay. Well, we started out in 1977, pretty much coinciding with that revival of uh, quilting in our country with the celebration of the bicentennial. And some of our founding mothers uh, are still uh, vibrant in the quilting world, Jeannie Spears, um, Helen Kelly is no longer with us, but Pat Cox is still involved in our organization, as well as uh, Bonnie Ellis and uh, Susan Stein. So they, they went to a few uh, exhibits and thought this was a, a good thing to, to bring back to Minnesota. And, uh, and I think I mentioned to you one other time that it's very easy for me to keep track of how old Minnesota Quilters is. My son was born in 77, so I know <laughs> that we are 44 years old and, uh, and going strong, uh, you know, always looking forward to that golden anniversary uh, when we'll be 50. Uh, we sort of grew from there, just a few uh, women getting together, and each time they gathered every month, then they would say, well, now you bring a friend, you bring a friend, and then we grew from a, a small group to now that now we have over 800 uh, members uh, in the organization, and not just uh, local Twin Cities, but throughout the state and other states as well. Um, our show uh, rotates in, in three different sections of the state. So when we're in the southern part with Rochester, in the central part with St. Cloud, in the northern part with Duluth, then we pull from those surrounding states um, as well as Canada uh, when we're in the northern part of the state. So we, we welcome quilters uh, from, from all states. And as Karen can attest, since we've been dealing with COVID and going to virtual meetings, uh, now we have people uh, from Texas and uh, Wyoming and, and especially our snowbirds. Up here in Minnesota, a lot of people leave and they don't stay for the snow, but they're able to stay connected now uh, through our virtual meetings. All right. So, well, so Karen, let's, let's talk a little bit about the quilt show because uh, you're doing an all virtual show in June, correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, we plan on having everything we've ever had at our in-person show, except as I told Bonnie, the sore feet. <laughs> and the travel expenses will be greatly reduced. Yes. The, um, we will have a merchant mall, 27 workshops are scheduled, 29 webinars and lectures, which are from one to three hours in length. We have, um, Ex excellent Zoom support for people to do that. The, um, the way people will come to our show is by going to our website, selecting admission. They will then get a confirmation email, which becomes their ticket. And then when they go back into the show, they will have their own little dashboard space. So there's none of that drop down list, where is the whatever. If you want to go see the judged quilts, you click right here and you are there. Okay, and tell us what your website address is if somebody wanted to go check that out. The best way to do it is to go to mnquilt.org and click on show and then click on 2021 show. It will take you right there. Okay, all right. And you know, we here at AQS use Cvent and I know that's what you're using for, for that event as well. So if people are used to going in and registering at AQS, well, then they know exactly what they'll need to do when they go to register through Cvent for you. Definitely. Well, every group does lots of different charity projects. And I know that your group has some things that you do that are a little bit different. Uh, you have a grant and a scholarship program. Tell us about that, Laura. Right. Uh, we we uh, offer... $500 grants to those, those uh, groups who apply. We have a deadline. We, we like to receive the requests by September and then we uh, present them to the board and then the board decides based on the uh, amount of money in the budget each year that we allot to the grants. 
And those grants allow groups to maybe bring in a, a speaker, uh, offer a class to their <clears throat> smaller guild, uh, as well as, excuse me, <clears throat> as well as uh, maybe they just need supplies for one of their charity projects, you know, either more batting or whatever. Um, and so this allows them to uh, do things that they couldn't ordinarily do based on their uh, budget because of the small amount of people who participate in their guild. Uh, we also support uh, public television in some of the outlying communities outside of the Twin Cities, which again uh, brings uh, quilting education to those that, that don't have access to some of these um, national teachers. Uh, and during the show, we have a quilting, a quilter of the year award, where we, um, we acknowledge uh, a quilter from Minnesota, not necessarily a, a member of Minnesota quilters, but a Minnesota quilter um, who has made an impact in the quilting world. And uh, they get to have an exhibit space. So they bring uh, several of their quilts and we interview them. And uh, then they also have an option to present a lecture uh, during the show. And this is always, obviously, they're always thrilled to become a uh, quilter of the year. And, uh, and our members are always glad to see uh, their body of work. Uh, in addition, at the State Fair every year, we, we offer awards uh, to some of the uh, best, uh, you know, hand quilting, machine quilting, uh, new, qu the first, if it's your first quilt. So those are some of the um, awards and, and ribbons we like to give. And then there's also a fine arts building uh, at the fair. And so these are people who are textile artists who consider their work not just a quilt, but a, you know, a, a work of art. And then we also give uh, an award in, in that area as well. Our new quilter scholarship takes place every year. And we ask women uh, or men who this is, they've only been quilting for a year and they apply for the scholarship to tell us how they got started and where they think this is going to go and, and how this impacts their life in general. And then after the, the board reviews these, um, submissions, then they choose uh, who's going to win this scholarship. And then that person receives uh, tickets to the show. They can take classes. We provide their uh, room and accommodations and a, a first year membership to the organization. And it is the, the people who win are, are so thrilled. And several of them become uh, longtime members of Minnesota Quilters and, and are already volunteering and contributing to the organization. So it really makes an impact on young and, and new quilters to this craft. Well, that's a, really gr that's a really good way to welcome a brand new quilter. Uh, because I bet when they come to the show then they do learn quite a bit and I can see why they then would continue on being a member of your group. Well, it is a way too that we're trying to attract younger members to the organization. I know every guild Everyone is, yes. is trying to do that. So uh, we, we certainly welcome uh, that younger generation. And, and in part of that at the show, uh, to encourage that, we have a youth exhibit as well, where we reach out to younger uh, quilters to uh, enter their, their quilts. And uh, usually one of our uh, machine sponsors uh, uh, contributes a, a machine that then uh, one of those young quilters can walk away with. And oh, you can you just can't imagine the smiles on the face of those little kid ones who win. They're just oh, they're I can imagine. Thrilled. Yes, I certainly can imagine. They, they they've never won anything like that before, have they? No, no. <laughs> so it's a lot of satisfaction uh, in, in providing those opportunities. Well, tell us about some of the things that you do quilt related, because I know you make a lot of quilts and you make placemats and tell us some yes. of the things you do with that. We, we do have a, a committee called Quilting for Others, uh, which has, you know, we were a little worried when, the, when COVID hit because it was like, well, how are we gonna get together? How are we gonna continue this? And, it's, and th we didn't have to worry. It has actually flourished uh, during COVID with the donations and volunteers. And so some of the things that our Quilting for Others does, uh, we make quilts, uh, children's quilts, uh, we donate to women's shelters. We provide lap quilts for uh, nursing homes and uh, veterans homes. 
we make placemats for meals on wheels and we make stockings for the St. Joseph's Children's Home and Head Start. And I was just in contact with the two uh, women who are leading this group. And uh, they said, we donate in excess of over a thousand quilts a year, that they're taking in over 25 quilts every week. We, uh, we open up the doors to uh, our place where we meet, uh, just to kind of have some drop off and, um, every Wednesday morning and they say at least 25 you know people are coming and picking up kits and I brought just a so we kit things up so if you don't have things that you want to you know use your own fabric for um, they make the kits uh, people make the quilt top they can bring the quilt top back somebody else picks it up and quilts it somebody else can put the binding on and eventually um, the quilt is finished and uh, some of the places that we donate to uh, the Minnesota visiting nurses, because they're always aware of, of where there are needs. Hennepin County uh, Medical Center, we donate to the children's oncology and surgical units. Uh, we donate to the Veterans Hospice, as well as some women's shelters, the Harriet Tubman and the Robert Lewis House. Uh, we donate to Jack's Basket, which is an organization supporting uh, young children with uh, Down syndrome. And then we've just recently started uh, supporting a, a, a shelter, not a shelter, but a, a home called Moments, and it's for Alzheimer's uh, patients. And so you can make those tactile sort of fidget uh, quilts for them. So where, wherever we are aware that there is a need, this group is reaching out to our members to say, here's what's needed next, and, and our members come forward. And, and they've always been willing to basically quilt for others, which is why we call the committee that. Well, so I know that you have been using Zoom and doing some things online. So tell us what's happening there of how you're doing your meetings and workshops. Well, we normally we, we meet twice a month on uh, Thursday evenings and Saturday mornings. And sometimes our programs are with uh, local quilters. Sometimes we bring in people uh, from the, uh, other parts of the country. And when we have a, a national speaker, then we'll, we'll have them do two different lectures on Thursday and Saturday, and then ask them to teach a class on Friday since they're already in town. Um, then that abruptly came to a halt, I believe <laughs> in March or April of last year. And everybody just sort of paused and wondered, now what's next? And, but Zoom, you know, Zoom was right there. And uh, a couple of our people on the education committee went, okay, we're gonna figure out how this works. And uh, within a couple of months, we were offering um, lectures. Um, and it was interesting how we um, evolved into that because e each time we learned how to do something, okay, here's how we bring a speaker. All right, that's one and done. Then it was, well, how do we do show and tell? So then we found out, it's not good to have people try to hold things up and talk about it. We, we found out, no, have them send pictures ahead of time and then we run it as a slideshow. And uh, then we found that we could still do uh, announcements. So little by little, I would say by, um, I'd say by the fall, we were pretty much uh, fully back to where we were, but just virtual, but our meetings were there. We were holding online retreats um and get togethers and it's it's and now i know that we can even at the end of a meeting if people want to stay we can go into breakout rooms and you know chat with each other if you happen to have a certain um type of quilting that you like to do and, and your friends are there then uh then we make that happen so it it's really been fun to see the growth and and to see the outreach that this allows us to do so that people who don't come to the Twin Cities for our meetings are now participating. And uh, we know that when we go back to in-person meetings that there's still going to be some type of a hybrid so that these people that we've reached out to and connected with can stay connected with the organization. Well, I see some really pretty quilts behind you. Uh, do you want to tell us about those? Sure, this is... Um, we have a raffle quilt every year to, to raise some of that funding for our scholarships. And there's a large version of this. And then this is the small wall hanging. And uh, we uh, on the show, one of the committees is a raffle quilt committee. 
And uh, so we got together, a friend and I, uh, nobody had stepped up to the committee and we went, well, we don't want a year to go by without a raffle quilt. So we got together with a, a local shop and got some fabric and packaged these up. And you, this is astounding. We, we made the little quilt kits so that everybody could make two of these houses, told them they had to be back in November. This is when we were still meeting in person. And we had a 93% return. Oh on my the goodness. I know. So that's why we ended up with more, more houses than we needed. So we were able to make both of those quilts. So now so will was, you be able to have a raffle quilt as part of your virtual show, Karen? Yeah, Karen, tell us that we still can, yes. Yes, uh, right now it took us a while to figure out how to handle the raffle tickets because of Minnesota's gaming laws. Right. So we wound up with people now can send in their money and some stickers with their address labels on it. We take the tickets, we separate them out and we put their address labels on them and then mail the stubs back to them for the raffle quilt. And um, that is working out amazingly well. In fact, it's working out a lot better than <laughs> our past processes did. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, you know what? Where there's a will, there's a way, isn't there? All right, and do you have another quilt? And the, the other quilt is, is one of the finished quilts uh, that's made uh, and donated by Quilting for Others. Um, this is one of the children's quilts. And then the other uh, large size quilt that we give to the women's shelter, it's called Heartstrings. And I don't, I don't have one of those blocks, but you've seen it where you start out with a foundation and you put one strip of red in the center and then you just strip piece on each side of that. And then so people can make those blocks and just bring a whole stack of blocks back or people can pick up the stack and continue on and make the quilt. So we, we've I believe you have, you have the instructions for that heart strings on your website, do you not? I yes. think I saw it there. Yes, we do, as, as well as the pattern for the stocking. So and any, it anything. makes a wonderful, sort of like a coordinated scrap quilt by putting one red strip down the center, isn't it? It does, yes. And they're, they're all attractive, and, and anyone who receives one is always very uh, happy to and gracious to, to have it. So... And I, I was going to mention, too, that uh, we've been in the press as one of the um, outcomes of our uh, Minnesota Quilt Project. Um, that's another standing committee that we have that does all of our quilt documentation and research and keeps track of the history of quilts in our state. And they were able to, um, about 10 years ago, put together one of those state documentation books, which we're very proud of. Uh, and just in the recent, uh, if you're familiar with Quilt Folk, yes. in uh, volume 13, uh, Minnesota uh, quilters were mentioned several times, as well as uh, they list many of our uh, state fair winners. And so we're, anytime we're, we're in the news, we're very, very excited to be, uh, to be recognized. And several of our members, uh, Helen Kelly, uh, Pat Cox, uh, they have been, uh, their quilts uh, have been asked to be part of the permanent collection uh, in Nebraska at the, at the quilt museum. So we're, we're most, most proud of our, of our quilters who have uh, just excelled and gone to the top. Well, and the best part of that is, is that those quilters have a lot to share with all the rest of you then, don't they? Well, they do and they continue. That's, that's what I think is so wonderful is that what they started as just a small group of women. Uh, they've left a, a marvelous legacy for the rest of us to, to follow in their footsteps. And uh, I, I was a transplant from uh, Colorado and I joined Minnesota Quilters as soon as I knew I was moving here. I just went, okay, so what, what do I do to get connected? Because um, I'd been at the Colorado Quilt Council and I thought, well, I can't go someplace where they don't have quilters. Um, so it, it's, it's just been fun to be a part of that and to grow uh, with the organization. Well, as a quilter, and my husband and I moved a number of times, it was always fun when you went into a community because quilters speak the same language. So you're not a stranger anywhere, isn't that right? That's, oh, that's right. Um, oh. At one of my first meetings, I got up with a show and tell, which was the quilt that my Colorado 
friends had a signature quilt, just like they used to do in the old days. Oh, you're going out west. Here, here's a signature quilt. So they <laughs> gave me one. I got it for show and tell. And there was somebody in the back of the room who came to meet me during during break. And she said, well, I, I live in the same city that you do. And, and I just moved back. And, you know, and not, we've been best friends now for 30 years. So it's, right. it's, it's just it's those connections. I mean, I love the craft, but I, th there's that component of fellowship and friendship that are, are most important. Well, our program today is being brought to you by the AQS Let's Quilt with Bonnie series. And it's a series of classes that we're doing. And so the quilt hanging behind me is the class number two that we just finished. And it's called Quilting with Triangles. And so you'll learn half square triangles, quarter square triangles, uh, flying geese made with triangles, or well, actually we make them with squares, but they become triangles. Uh, and so that's a free program on quiltweek.com slash let's quilt. And uh, the first class that we did was basics about making a quilt, how to make a nine patch block, put it together with sashing, put a border on it, put the binding on it. Pretty simple for somebody who's really just get, getting started. And this one is triangle. And now the next class, number three, will be the exquisite scrap quilt. So you don't have to go buy anything. You can just dig out scraps right out of your own little stash. Uh, and it's going to be a fun class, and that will start in April. So I hope that you'll encourage your quilt makers in your guild to uh, go take a look at that. Again, that's quiltweek.com slash let's quilt. And for those of you who are watching who might end up in Minnesota, particularly in the summertime when it's really nice up there, right? Uh, the M and quilt. Oh yes. M and quilt. Dot org. Dot <laughs> org. Uh, is how you go to their website and go in and take a look. You could take some of their classes and visit the vendors. We've all been missing our vendors, haven't we? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. Well, so, uh, thank you ladies for being with us today and uh, we'll be coming to you soon with another AQS Guild Buzz with Bonnie. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you.